People come here to Drago's from all over the world to try these oysters. I remember before I worked here, working a festival on the riverfront with tons of different restaurants out there, and everybody was jealous of Drago's. They had the longest line, their booths smelled the best, it carried for miles. Everybody, even the cooks, wanted some of the oysters. So now to be the chef here and to see the expressions on people's faces when they try them for the first time or they've tried other places charbroiled oysters and we get to say, oh no, there's a reason we're the best. Hi, I'm Austin Egan. I'm the executive restaurant chef at Drago's at Hilton New Orleans Riverside. And this is Off the Menu with Hilton. The first step to making Drago's charbroiled oysters is gonna be our garlic butter. Start with a couple tablespoons of butter over low heat. While that's melting, we're gonna go ahead and chop one head of garlic. The exciting part. Smash your garlic, make it a little bit easier to chop quickly. Add our chopped garlic to our butter. Okay, next we have a little bit of fresh oregano fresh thyme and fresh rosemary. Give that a quick rough chop, just like the garlic. Once the garlic is sweat a little bit, we can go ahead and add in the rest of our butter. Once our butter is melting, go ahead and add in our oregano, thyme, and rosemary, and let that continue to melt slowly. You don't want the butter to totally separate. While that's finishing up, we can go ahead and slice our French bread, about an inch and a half thick. Go ahead and cut our lemon wedges. I'm a fan of cutting off the ends. It's a little nicer on the presentation. Okay, so the last part is gonna be grating our Parmesan Reggiano and a Pecorino Romano. I have here a microplane, which is going to grate the cheese extra fine. I highly recommend picking one up. You want about half and half, so half Parmesan, half Pecorino. And to finish off our cheese, we're just gonna add a little bit of fresh chopped parsley. Just mix that in a little bit, and our cheese is ready to go. Once all the butter is melted, kill the heat to that. We have our fresh Louisiana Gulf oysters here. Very important to keep them on ice. Have an oyster knife, and the towel's gonna protect you from any slips that might happen. So you're gonna go at the hinge and just give it a light twist of the wrist, it'll pop open. Slice under the muscle that keeps the oyster in the shell. Make sure you wipe your knife. You don't wanna get any shell into the actual body of the oyster. Leave the oyster in the bottom so it has a nice bowl here. That's what's gonna hold in all of our butter and cheese when we go to charbroil these. And now we're ready for the grill. Being in Louisiana is really cool for me as a chef. Being on the Gulf, we have a plethora of fresh seafood. Our oysters come from only a few miles away. Our mahi, our shrimp is bought right off the dock in St. Bernard Parish. Drago's been around for a long time, and these charbroiled oysters have become a staple of New Orleans cuisine. We make over 100,000 a year. It's by far our most popular dish. Preheat your grill as hot as it'll get and place your oysters on the grill as close together as you can get them. That's going to keep the butter from being wasted. After adding your garlic butter, go ahead and let them cook for about 60 seconds or until you see the edges of the shell starting to get some color. Next, we're going to add our cheese mix. I like to do two or three handfuls or until oysters are nicely coated. Once you've added your cheese, you can drizzle more garlic butter over the top to get the flames going. After they've cooked for about 30 more seconds, you should see the cheese melting and beginning to brown on top, at which point we can take them off the grill one by one and get ready to plate. Finish them with a little bit more of our garlic butter, more of our cheese blend, some lemon wedges, and our sliced French bread. And that's how you make charbroiled oysters. Cooking is the only thing I've ever been paid to do in my life. Uh, I fell into it in high school. I got a job as a dishwasher. One day the pantry cook quit 
and the chef looked at me and said, Austin, you're up. When I was a kid, my dad always told me money follows passion. Getting good at what you're doing uh, and being passionate about it, it just makes the food better when everyone is always trying to be the best. Guests can tell if a kitchen's passionate about what they're making, if they, if they care about it, if they love it, if they're excited to cook it, and that in turn drives a successful business.